I'm Robert Nicholson, and I'm the president of the ED Treatment Information Center. Today, I'm going to talk about treatments for erectile dysfunction. The treatments for ED haven't changed much in the past 20 years, but there's still a lot of misinformation out there about what works and what doesn't. So today, I'm going to clear up the confusion. How do we know what works? Everything we tell you, both on our website and here on our YouTube channel, is supported by scientific research and clinical studies. In other words, it's based on solid evidence. We ignore the testimonials that we read in online forums and websites, and so should you. Some of the testimonials may be from men experiencing the well-known placebo effect. A small percentage of patients will always believe their condition has improved, even if you give them sugar pills. But a lot of the online claims are from shills, people who have a vested interest in promoting a particular treatment. So let's see what the science tells us. PDE5 inhibitors are the first treatment usually prescribed by doctors for erectile dysfunction. They're safe and effective for over 60% of men. As we said in the previous episode, the mechanism that produces erections is very complicated. There are chemicals that trap blood in the penis, and another chemical, PDE5, that causes it to be released. Oral medications for ED weaken the effects of PDE5, so the blood remains trapped in the penis. Side effects of PDE5 inhibitors may include headaches, dizziness, and vision problems, but they're usually mild. Men who experience side effects or who don't have good results with a particular medication can try a different PDE5 inhibitor because they all work a little bit differently. Now the brand name drugs are very expensive, but their patents are expiring. So you can now buy generic versions of Viagra and Cialis, which are a lot less expensive. If you spend much time in ED discussion forums, you'll find lots of people promoting various herbal remedies. Unfortunately, when we ignore the shills and look at the scientific studies, we find that these supplements have little, if any, effect. And more importantly, they can be really dangerous. Many herbal supplements have serious side effects and can interact with prescription medicines that you may already be taking. Furthermore, and this is really scary, the FDA has found that more than half the supplements they tested did not even contain the ingredients listed on the label, and many of them contained dangerous additives, including pesticides. We're going to devote an entire episode to herbal supplements, but for now, if you want more information, visit our website. As we mentioned in our first episode, vascular and circulatory problems are the most common cause of erectile dysfunction. A heart-healthy diet and aerobic exercise can help with these problems. We're going to devote an entire episode to lifestyle changes next time, but let me give you a quick summary. Erect effective lifestyle changes require a serious, long-term commitment. For most men, the improvement in erectile dysfunction is pretty small. However, the health benefits alone can make this a worthwhile effort. A vacuum pump, also called a penis pump, is a cylinder that's placed over the penis. A pump is used to create a vacuum, causing the penis to inflate. Blood is then trapped in the penis using a constriction band or a cock ring. Penis pumps work for some guys, but not everyone gets fully hard using a pump. Also, they can be uncomfortable or even painful, and they certainly take the spontaneity out of sex. Pumps are sometimes recommended for regular therapeutic use to maintain the blood flow in the penis. It's important to know that if the vacuum is too strong, it can cause permanent damage to the penis. So if you buy a pump, be sure to get an FDA approved unit with a built-in vacuum safety valve, not the cheap units that are sold in sex shops. Finally, and this is important, vacuum pumps will not make your penis bigger no matter what the ads say. Sorry guys. 
By injecting combinations of drugs, typically called bimix or trimix, directly into the penis, you can trigger the chemical signals that cause an erection. I know, ouch, right? But I want to reassure you guys, the needle is really tiny, and once you get used to the injections, it feels like a pinprick. Just as with oral medications, you need to inject the medication a little while before you plan to have sex, so it's not entirely spontaneous. Injections work for a lot of men who don't respond to the oral medications, so it's certainly worth a trial. And note that similar drugs are available as a suppository that you insert into the urethra, which some men find less painful than an injection. I'll let you be the judge on that one. Platelet-rich plasma therapy is not the same as the injection therapy we just talked about. This is the treatment that's done in a doctor's office. Concentrated platelets are derived from the patient's own blood and re-injected into the penis to regenerate nerves and blood vessels. However, clinical studies show no evidence that this works. This treatment is being heavily promoted to guys who are desperate for a cure, but in our opinion, it's nothing but expensive snake oil. Shockwave therapy is another procedure that's usually performed in a doctor's office although home treatment units are also available. Ultrasonic waves are administered to the penis to promote the growth of blood vessels. This is a tough one to call because there are some clinical studies that show promise while others show no effect at all. But shockwave therapy has been around for a long time and it's never become a mainstream treatment to promote healing. If shockwaves were really effective, they'd probably be used for many conditions today, and they're not. The best we can say about shockwave therapy is that it may have some benefit for mild cases of ED. Again, as we discussed in our first episode, if you have a deficiency of specific hormones, vitamins, or minerals that are required for erections, then replacement therapy can be very effective. But I'm going to emphasize that these treatments will do no good unless you have a specific deficiency. And this is something that your doctor can determine with a simple blood test. Okay, guys, ready for another ouch moment? A penile implant is a fairly major surgery. A flexible or inflatable implant is inserted into your penis. If you choose an inflatable implant, which is the most popular option, a saline reservoir is placed in your abdomen and a small pump is placed in your scrotum. You can have an erection anytime you want for as long as you want, simply by squeezing the pump a few times. Now this surgery can be a painful procedure with a fairly long recovery time, but once you're fully healed, this treatment has by far the highest rate of patient satisfaction. It gets a rating of over 90% from men and from their partners. I hope this episode has helped you to understand the current options for treating erectile dysfunction. As always, if you have questions or feedback, please use the contact form on our website. Let us know what's on your mind. Till next time. Bye.